all right guys welcome back to unit 10 e and our topic for today is next please um, I want you guys to look and focus on what's happening in and what you can see obviously it looks like a, a movie theater and you guys know what you can do at a movie theater you can watch movies you guys are familiar with all of the uh, different type of movie theaters in Ho Chi Minh. Our topic for today is next please. Um, what you guys can see over here is a girl and uh, a boy and we see some of, um, some of the customers at the back or the audiences and they are watching a movie. It's a little bit empty while they're watching the movie. So let's start our lesson. Right, okay, buying tickets at the movie theater. Now there's different ways that we can buy tickets nowadays. Most of you are familiar with the internet. Most of you are familiar with, you can go on the internet and book your tickets so that you can only go and show your voucher or your ticket to the person at the counter and you can enter the cinema, buy some snacks, buy some popcorn for your convenience. There's nice movies that's playing at the moment um, in the movie theaters. So you guys can enjoy a variety of movies with your family as well as with your friends, depending on who you want to go with. All right, so buying tickets at the movie theater. We are specifically focusing uh, not on the online purchases, but on going to the movie theaters where you can physically go and pay for your ticket for you and your family or for you and your friends, or for you and your brother, it doesn't matter. Right? Listen and repeat and say these sentences in your language. Now obviously we cannot do this, this activity together, so I want you guys and you can practice with your friends, whether it's on WhatsApp, whether it's on Skype, you guys can practice with your friends, wherever you are. Um, let's look at some of the sentences that they want us to listen to. I'll play all of the sentences first, and I want you guys to listen to the way they say it and you can repeat it and then you can say it in your own language. So I'll play it first and then you can repeat and then we can, you can say it in your own language via Skype or via WhatsApp, whichever platform you choose to do. Alright, listening at the first one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sentences. I will play and you listen. Next, please. That's $20 altogether. Here are your tickets and your change. Two tickets for Oceans 13 at 6 p.m., please. I'm afraid it's sold out. Is there a discount for students? Enjoy the movie. All right, and that's the end of the sentences. If you look at some of the words, next please, that's $20 altogether. We can see that this is a purchase that's taking place. Uh, one person is the customer and the other person is the one selling the tickets. So we will call them um, the salesperson we have movies that we can watch there's two tickets for two people and the movie that's currently being showed is oceans 13 lovely movie if you guys have not watched it yet and we have a time phrase um, we have also have gratitude where one of the the customers say please and this is very important that when we go buy or purchase something we be respectful and say hello and thank you and please as well right i'm afraid it's sold out in the event that ocean 13 is playing and there's no more tickets left because it's sold out because this is a popular movie that played right is there a discount for students when we talk about discount we talk about a lowered price so students usually pay less let's say for example the movie uh, costs 80,000 Vietnamese dong students can get it at half price or at a lesser price because they're not working so they will pay 
40,000 Vietnamese are depending. All right, so let's look at the passage before we go any further. All right, now the passage says that the sentences below are from dialogues. Okay, we know that the dialogue is between two people, uh, between a ticket seller and the customer. Obviously, when teacher goes to buy a ticket, I am the customer and the person that's behind the counter is the ticket seller. All right, so what they want us to do is they want us to say who says each of these words. Okay, choose T for ticket, seller and C for customers. All right, looking at some of the words, next please. I would presume that the ticket seller would say so because she's the one that is receiving all the customers. Right, that's $20 altogether. I would presume the ticket seller would say so. Here are your tickets and your change. Once again, the ticket seller would say that. Two tickets for Ocean's 13 at 6 p.m., please. I would say that the customer is the one wanting to buy the tickets and therefore he would request this right i'm afraid it's sold out now the customer would not know if the tickets are sold out and this only the ticket seller will be able to say all right is there a discount for students i would presume that the customer would ask this all right because the ticket seller would make this information available immediately if she knows all right and enjoy the movie well, the customer is going to watch the movie, so the ticket seller would say, enjoy the movie. Right, so these are my guesses. Now, let's see if I am correct, and let's move on to the next page. I'll play the audio, but before I play the audio, I want to draw your attention to something quickly. Remember, we talked about the dialogue. Okay, now, if you notice, dialogue is in plural form. And because it's in plural form, it means there is two sets of dialogues, as you can see here. All right, one dialogue, two dialogues. All right, first one being between Andy and the ticket seller, and second one being between Jane and the ticket seller as well. All right, if you look at the two dialogues, the one is buying an adult ticket and a child ticket for Spider Man at 7 pm. And the second one, Jane is requesting movie tickets for Ocean's 13 to people at 6 p.m. as well. All right, and the ticket price varies for the different uh, movies at hand, one being $20 and one being $24. All right, and here we see no one talks about discount, but here we see there's a discount for students and they only pay $8. Right, so let's listen to the audio clip and then we can take it from there. A. Next, please. One adult and one child for Spider-Man at 7 p.m., please. That's $20 altogether. Here you are. Thank you. Here are your tickets and your change. Thanks. B. Two tickets for Ocean's 13 at 6 p.m., please. I'm afraid it's sold out. Oh, that's too bad. We still have tickets for the 9 p.m. and the 11.30 p.m. showings. Oh, okay. Two tickets for 9 p.m. then, please. That's $24, please. Is there a discount for students? Yes. Tickets are $8 for students. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. All right, so those are the two dialogues and the audio clips. Remember, we had an activity in the beginning, right over here, where we needed to see if it's correct or incorrect. And right, and if I can go back to this activity, teacher said this is the ticket seller, as well as this one and this one. All right, and this is the customer requesting the price. Um, I'm afraid it's sold out. This will be the ticket seller. Is there a discount for students? This will be the customer. And enjoy the movie. This will be the ticket seller. And if we check the answers. All right, exactly as I have listed it for us. All right, moving on. 
Okay, read the dialogues. Which movies do the customers want to see and which showings do they buy tickets for? Now, when they talk about showings, they're talking about the time frame, at what time. Alright, so the first one being at 7 p.m. and the second one being at 6 p.m. So, if we look and open the passages, uh, Spider-Man is playing at 7 p.m. and Ocean's 13 is playing at 9 p.m. Alright. The reason being that it's not 6 p.m. is because this showing or time slot is reserved. Alright. So they're booking it at a much later stage. Alright, moving on. Find phrases in the dialogue which means what? Okay, so we're looking at synonyms, but we're looking at finding the phrases. Uh, number one, that'll be $20. What's another way of saying that that will be $20, right? Another way of saying it, if we look at the two dialogues, they only talk about the $20 in the one dialogue and not in both. So now we know that they talk about the first dialogue and not the second one. Okay, so here they mention the $20. So what is a phrase that means the same as that'll be $20? And that will be that's twenty dollars all together, all right? Because of the mere fact that they mentioned the twenty dollars. All right. Sorry, but there are no tickets left. All right. Um, in dialogue number two, we see that there are no tickets left for the specific showing at six p.m. All right. So another way of saying sorry, but there are no tickets left. I'm afraid it's sold out. All right. Because in the first passage, they do not talking about the sellout of the tickets. Alright, is there a lower price for students? In which dialogue can we see that they negotiate about and talk about a lower price? Not the first one, but the second one. Alright, in this dialogue, they talk about a lower price. Okay, is there a discount for students? Talk about a lower price. Alright, and I hope you like the movies. Here we have uh, two examples, uh, but only in the second dialogue do they talk about um, enjoying the movie. So I hope you like the movie. Thank you. Enjoy the movie, I would say, is the perfect uh, sentence that we can fit in in this dialogue. Right. Once again, I would say that whenever we do activities, please do it by yourself first and then see if, we, if you have the correct answer. I do not want you to get into the habit of just looking at the answers because that's not good for you and it doesn't give your brain any stimuli and it doesn't challenge your brain at all. Right, take roles and act out similar dialogues in pairs. You can do it with your friends, right? Use the information below as well as sentences from the list on the right to buy your tickets and record yourselves. And this would be a very fun activity, right? Same scenario that we have in the beginning. What I would suggest is you can phone your friend um, and you can record yourselves as well. I will play the audio clip and you can talk about Pirates of the Caribbean showing in screen number two. And these are the different showings. So I'll play the audio clip and then you can go take it from there. Two tickets for Pirates of the Caribbean 3 at 4 p.m. please. I'm afraid it's sold out. We still have tickets for the 7 p.m. and the 10 p.m. showings. Oh, okay. Two tickets for 7 p.m. then please. That's $24 please. Is there a discount for students? Yes, tickets are $8 for students. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Enjoy the movie. Alright, and that's the audio clip. Um, the example given to us is from a movie theater called Cineworld Movie Theaters. Alright, so what you can do, you can be a little bit more creative. Use this as an example of buying tickets for adults and children as well. You can even ask for a discount with your friends while you act out the dialogue with your friends. Alright, so moving on. 
And this is my favorite part where we talk about pronunciation and looking at the phonemes. You guys are familiar because I have drilled this part with you guys for so many times, so you must be familiar. The only thing that you will not be familiar with is the sounds, and the only thing that I would think that you would need help with are the sounds and how to pronounce. So I will play the first two phonemes for you, and then we can go through some of the words together. Uh. Oh. Right, so those are the two sounds that we listen to. Now we'll play it again so that you can familiarize yourself with it. And looking at the words, we will say what sound each of these makes. Uh. Oh. Uh. Oh. All right, and now that you are familiar with the two phonemes, I want to draw your attention to the words. Number one is burn. Burn. Number two is bone. Bone. Number three is fur. Fur. And number four is foam. Foam. All right, so these are the two words, but what I'm mostly interested in are the sounds that they make. All right, so we have burn, which has the er uh sound, and bone, which has the o oh sound. What I also want to draw your attention to is the fact that the er uh sound is a little bit dragged. Okay, so you don't say uh, but er. Uh. So we drag the phoneme sound when we talk about the er uh sound in burn. All right, so the first example I've already given to you, and that's the answer. All right, so the burn has an er uh sound to it. Right, the bone sound, which talks about the o oh sound, and we can see that we have the er uh and the o, oh, and obviously this is not burn, but this is bone. All right, so we know that this answer is number two. All right, when we have fur, same as burn, which has the er uh sound, and it is dragged a little bit, so we have er, uh, which is the first phoneme, and if we look at foam, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we're not looking at the vowels, but we're looking at the sound that is made by the words, okay? Not looking at the vowels, but the sounds, er uh, and o. Oh. If we look at the two examples, we have bone and foam, and they are written um, in different ways, but they have the same sound, right? So number two, here we have the O sound. All right, and that's all for pronunciation for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. You can play around with the different words and you can even be creative and use your own words as well. So what I will do is we will move on to the workbook now. And this is the end of Unit 10 E for our access book. And moving on to our workbook. All right, moving on in unit 10 e that's what we're busy with today and here we have some vocabulary first one saying complete the blanks in the sentences to solve the crossword puzzle what is the hidden word all right so what we're looking at is a crossword puzzle where we need to fill in the words you guys are quite familiar with crossword puzzles uh, two things we need to do we need to complete the crossword puzzle and find the hidden word in this crossword puzzle as well. Right, so looking at number one, okay, how much do the mm cost for the concert? Right, so when we go to concerts, what do we usually buy to get in? Uh, we usually buy tickets to get in, and that's our first answer for number one. Right, I would encourage you to do this beforehand and just pause the video and then you can do this first and see if you can fill in all the words and then play the video again. All right? There is a mm at 6 p.m. What can we say? Uh, I'll give you a clue and that has something to do with the different times. And if we look at number two, we see that the missing word is showing. All right? Number three. I gave the store owner $17 and he gave me $3 what? Alright, usually when we go buy something at the shop, 
they give us something in return and that something is called change right number four I'd like one mm, one student and one child ticket please all right there's different categories of tickets that we get and different prices for these um, tickets as well and our missing word for number four is adult one student and one child so the missing word here is adult right moving on to number five it usually costs twelve dollars to get in but there is a what for children and students all right looking at our two dialogues in the second dialogue we talked about this word and this word is none other than discount once again all of the words and vocabulary that we're using now is the same are the same words that we used for um, the access book so these words are no different than what we have used before Right, we saw a scary what last night at the movie theater. Right, when we go to a movie theater, the only thing that we can watch is a movie. Right, you're going the wrong way. Spider Man is in mm, room five. Right, and this is not a new word because we have covered it, it's in screening room five. Right, number eight. It cost us $34 mm, to see the movie and have dinner. Alright, so the missing word that we have here is all together. Okay, number nine, let's go see the new. Mm, I heard it's really funny. Right, and the only category that we can fill in here is comedy. So let's see the new comedy. I heard it's really funny that we can put in number nine. All right, moving on to number 10. The ticket mm, told us that there were no seats left. All right, going to the movie theater, when you buy tickets, you buy it over the counter, and the person selling the tickets, we call the ticket seller or the ticket teller. All right, so the missing word for this one is teller, or you can even say seller as well. All right, Julie wants to become a famous what one day? I just want to draw your attention to the fact that Julie is a girl, so we cannot say actor, but actress. All right, so the missing word for number 11 is actress. All right, and that concludes the crossword puzzle that we have. And the missing word that you guys can fill in, if you look and you have completed the whole crossword puzzle, the missing word is theater goer. Right, and a theater goer, it's someone that visits the movies. Right, the customers, the ones that go watch the movie, those are your theater goers. And that completes it for the vocabulary for number one. And let's move on to number two. Right, so use the adjectives in the box to make sentences comparing the three actresses above. So who do we have? We have Hoopy Goldberg, Kira Knightley, and we have Meryl Streep. All three which are very famous American actors that you can see. And the adjectives that we use for all of them, all right? We can see that Hoopy Goldberg has three ticks, Kira Knightley two, and Meryl Streep only has one. So what can we say given all of these ticks is that Hoopy Goldberg has more talented uh, then Kira Knightley and Whoopi Goldberg and Meryl Streep are more talented than Kira Knightley. Right, if we look at number two, we can see beautiful as an adjective, and if we use this in a sentence, right, what can we say using more, then, less than, as, and the most or the least? Right, so we can say Kira Knightley is less talented than Meryl Streep. Right. Looking at number two, we can say Kira Knightley is less talented than Meryl Streep. And number three, Kira Knightley is the most beautiful of the three because she has three ticks. Right, so Kira Knightley. Um, is more beautiful than Meryl Streep and Hoopy Goldberg together. Alright, looking at the success using the 
adjective successful, we can say that uh, Kira Knightley is not as successful as Meryl Streep. Right, obviously because Meryl Streep has been in the industry for longer than Kira Knightley and she's much more experienced in her acting career. So Meryl Streep is more successful, we can say, than Kira Knightley. Right, and Whoopi Goldberg is the funniest right, of them all. Right, same as funny and if we use well known, Whoopi Goldberg is well known or more well-known than uh, Kira Knightley. We can also say that Whoopi Goldberg and Meryl Streep are more well-known than Kira Knightley. Only because Kira Knightley is a new actress and she came in the game recently and that's the only reason why. Using some of the words. Now I've given you some of the examples and you can complete the chart using all of these adjectives. So I've given you some of the examples and you can be creative and use some of the adjectives to form words and that's for our grammar right looking at the last part complete the exchanges with the phrases below now they've given us some of the phrases um, here you are I'm afraid it's sold out what this is is to test your grammar and to see that you fill in the correct grammar with the correct spots so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the first one and then we can go through it together. So first one is can I help you? So obviously this is the ticket seller asking you a question. Alright, and the correct response, or let me rather start with the incorrect response, okay? If someone asks you can I help you, alright, and your response would be only for children I'm afraid, and that is not the correct response. We can say yes you can help me. You can say two tickets for Harry Potter, please, because they are asking you what do you want at the movie theater. All right, so we can start off by saying two tickets for Harry Potter, please. All right, where the ticket seller says here are your tickets, we can say thanks, and which screening room is it in? And they will advise you. So here are your tickets, we can say thanks, and which screening room is it in? All right, looking at number three, that's $25 all together. All right, and the correct response that we have is here you are. All right, can I have a ticket for the 8 p.m. showing? And the correct response is either I'm afraid it's sold out. All right, or the correct response can also be here you are. All right. If we go on to number five, is there a discount for students? Now, there can only be two responses for this. All right, it can only be only for children, I'm afraid, or no, there is no discount. In which case, the latter is not here where they say, no, there's no discount. But is there a discount for students? And the correct response is only for children, I'm afraid. Right, and the last one, we still have tickets for the midnight showing, six, and the correct response is, okay, I'll have three tickets for that showing then, or you can decline by saying no thank you, of which no thank you are not in the list of words. So the correct response is, okay, I'll have three tickets for that showing then. Right, so what I want to do is I want to put on the answers for you and then you can fill it in. But I would strongly advise you to do it first and then you can take it from there. Right, and these are the answers for Unit 10E. You can pause the video and fill it in, but that's all for the lesson for Unit 10E. And see you in Lesson 10F and goodbye.